Japan has two types of honeybees, the imported western bee and the native Japanese honeybee. On this channel, we talk about Japan's native honeybee and the traditional beekeeping methods that are still practiced in Japan. This is Mayu, a local beekeeper in Japan. She and her family only keep native bees. Next to her is one of their colonies. This type of hive is called a pile box hive. It is structured so that Japanese honeybees can build their comb downward, just as they would in the wild. The comb is initially used to keep larvae, but as the colony extends downwards, the queen bee lays her eggs further down into the new comb. The comb originally used for raising brood is then used to store honey. The colony is structured so that honey is stored in the upper boxes and the brood are reared in the lower boxes. This means that as the colony grows, beekeepers add boxes to the bottom of the colony, not the top like western honeybees being kept in a long straw hive. Honeycomb initially starts out white, but becomes darker from raising brood. This means the comb can be quite dark by the time the bees use it to store honey. White comb containing honey is very beautiful, so Maya would like to see if it's possible to get the bees to build the comb upwards instead of downwards. To start with, Mayo is checking to see how far down the colony has expanded the honeycomb by removing the bottom board and taking a look under the hive. There is very little space in the lower box for the colony to continue to expand. Normally, Mayo would place a box at the bottom of the colony. Instead, Mayo will place a new box on the top of the colony. Hopefully, the bees will build new comb in the top box since there is no more space to expand the colony at the bottom. The bees only store honey in the upper region of the hive, so no larvae will initially be placed in the comb. This should result in pure white comb filled with honey. The colony selected for this experiment is very strong. There is also sufficient flora available. A weak colony would not be able to build upwards, especially if there were an insufficient nectar source. Next, she takes off the lid of the box and removes the bees with the blower. After that, she takes off the duckboard to reveal the comb below. The honey is very light and from the springtime. Maya will add this box to the top of the hive. Normally, the boxes contain a crossbar to prevent the comb from falling, but this box doesn't contain any. Mayu carefully brushes away the bees to prevent them from getting crushed. A week has passed since Mayu set up the top box. Let's take a look and see if the bees have built any comb. The box is full of bees, but the comb has not been extended much. However, the bees have repaired the comb from the duckboard removal of the previous week. It has now been two weeks since the top box was added. The honeycomb has been extended two centimeters upwards. 
there is no honey stored yet in the newly built comb. There initially was still a little bit of space left in the bottom box. So the bees most likely continued to expand downwards before attempting to expand upwards. Three weeks have passed since the placement of the top box. Ooh. Mayu is pleasantly surprised to see that the bees have built a lot of comb since last week. The comb has now been extended by 5 centimeters. It has now been a month since the top box was set up. As Mayo prepares to assess the progress of the honeycomb building, a yellow hornet decides to make an appearance. Mayu uses her ninja-like reflexes to quickly capture the hornet. With that taken care of, she can now take a proper look at the colony. She is impressed by the bee's progress. It looks like around 15% of the top box has been filled with honeycomb. We are now at the five week mark. We can see the bees have created what appears to be a small mountain of honeycomb. Mayo has spotted some honey in the comb, but there still isn't much. It will probably be several weeks or months until the entire box is filled with comb and honey. It is no longer summer and four months have passed since Mayu first set up the top box. She removes the lid and reveals that the duckboard is covered in lots of bees. It looks like the colony is doing really well. The bees are removed with a blower to prepare for the duckboard removal. The duckboard is firmly attached to the honeycomb, a good sign that the box has been filled to the top with comb. Mayo uses the wire to detach the duckboard. Honey in beautiful white comb is revealed. She now will remove the top box to take out the honeycomb. She uses the wire to cut the comb, just as she did to remove the duckboard attached to the comb. The honeycomb is a very beautiful, rich color. Since this honey was produced in the fall, it is a bit darker than the honey collected in the spring. Mayu uses a blower to remove any remaining bees and will place the top box in a plastic container. She now can take the box to cut out the comb. This is the honeycomb removed from the top box. The comb is all one consistent color. There is no darkening since no brood was raised in the comb. Mayu has prepared some jars and a net to filter the honey. 
She will cut the comb into smaller pieces to fit inside the jars, and she will filter the rest of the comb by hand to get the honey. She decides which parts of the comb she will place into the jars. She now cuts the comb into smaller pieces. The honeycomb are carefully placed in the jars. As she cuts the comb for the jars, she also cuts some pieces of the comb and places them into the net to be filtered. <laughs> After placing honeycomb into the last jar, she cuts up the remaining comb to be stored. Now comes the really fun part. Mayu squeezes the comb by hand to get the honey out. This is a budget-friendly way to extract honey if you don't have a honey press. Now that the honey has been extracted, Mayu adds it to the jars with the comb. All the hard work and effort has paid off with beautiful jars filled with honeycomb and honey from Japan's native bee. Thank you for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure to leave them below in the comment section. Please feel free to check out our Instagram, where we post daily about beekeeping in Japan and of course, Japanese honeybees. We also have a website full of useful information about our native bee. Take care and see you in the next video.